Hello everyone and welcome to another time on Dyslexia where we talk about our experiences and issues around dyslexia. Today I have a very interesting guest with me. But before I go on, I'm Dr. Adrian Tukulu. Today I have Chioma with me. Chioma, nice to see you today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Doc. It's good to be here again. Great. I'm so excited when I knew that I was going to be talking with you. Um, it's always great to talk to trusted people like you on this program. So before we go on, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Um, Chioma Chukura. I'm 41 years old. And I'm dyslexic and I'm proud to have dyslexia. Uh, initially, I was scared about it, but right now it is my superpower and I'm proud to be one. Awesome. In fact, the fact that you say you're proud is something people are not used to hearing. You know, because they were always used to dyslexic struggle and then, you know, it seems like something really bad. So I'm happy to hear that you're saying you are happy to be dyslexic, but what led you in the first place to, to get an assessment and get assessed for dyslexia? Alright, um, first of all, so um, what led me now to do a check was I started doing Spanish on Duolingo and sometimes I would see a word and I would interpret it the way I feel it should be. But when it comes to writing it, I would write something else. It would tell me I'm wrong. And I'm like, but that's not what you people wrote. And I'm looking and it was almost as if we were doing juju. The whole thing would change. I'm like, what, what the hell is going on? You know, and I just kept stumbling on, you know, words, especially like the introductory parts where I had improved. I kept struggling with it. And that's when I now decided, you know what? Maybe I should check this thing out. At least find out what it is, first of all. And that's what led me. To, you know, going to Google where everybody goes to check out things, and I was shocked what I saw, especially when I did dyslexia for adults. It was as if I was really describing it and my struggles. That's how I found it. Awesome. I mean, you, you did well to even think about it, but you, you said you didn't want to be labeled, you didn't want to be thinking or speaking negative about yourself. How did you view dyslexia of people with dyslexia before, of course, what you know now? How did you view dyslexia? Well, it's just one of those things you, you've heard of just somewhere. And I remember, you know, they said it was a disability. And you know, when you say something is a disability, that means there is a problem. That means there is a limitation. And I was like, I just didn't want to be grouped who had limitations. I knew I had my struggles, but I didn't want to, you know, be looked at as somebody who was disabled. I think that's the one. Especially since you have your strengths and yeah, you know exactly. your good parts. <laughs> and that's the thing about dyslexics or dyslexic people with dyslexia is that, you know, they have struggles in some areas, but they're very good in other things. They, they don't struggle all through with everything. So, you know, I'm, I'm also curious then, so when you were little in school, cast your mind back a little. Did you get any sort of support? What was it like in school with the teachers, friends? What was that like? Well, in school, I think I was very good in hiding my struggles, to be honest. Because when I found out, I've been thinking back and I was like, well, I was able to hide it. But I remember, like, in school, being called out to come and be in front of the class. It was a terror. Something I hated. It was something I struggled with. And for me, I love reading. All my life, I always had a book with me. But when I'm reading it to myself, it's okay. I think I'm reading okay. But when you tell me to come and read it out to people, that's when things, the world starts moving about. I start stumbling with pronunciations and things like that. So to me, I just had to hide that. And um, I remember, like, not really primary, even up to secondary school, I had like a priority complex, so I was really inside. 
So it was when I got to university, I had to break that mold. So I became quite outgoing, and that really helped me, you know, hide my struggles. And um, I remember in secondary school with mathematics, I remember my mom telling me that I shouldn't, because she was a math teacher, she told me I should, during the exam, I shouldn't do any, you know, during the theory part, you shouldn't solve anything. That she would do, like, the graph, the construction, and I love drawing. So anything that had to do with construction, drawing, bearing, all those things, I did them, you know, and left the whole calculating part. So I think that helped me with mathematics. But, you know, it's just little tips here and there, you know, that just helped me going. By the time I got to the university, I learned how to mix and match. You know, that's what I call it. <laughs> so, which is, I go through articles, go through things, and I pick, you know, the... What to take and then the Exactly, parts. what I'm looking for. And then I mix everything up, you know, take this person's idea and, you know, just mix it up. Maybe just add these words and... You know, that's really my only contribution. But it really looked as if I could write. But I knew during the examination, I struggled, you know, to actually put down my thoughts. It's not like I didn't know. So till today, I keep telling people that um, examination is not a true test of knowledge because I felt I was being limited. I was being eliminated because I couldn't, you know, put down my thoughts into words, you know, so I felt so bad to <laughs> that. In fact, I mean, listening to you, I, I am a dyslexia expert, but speaking to the person with dyslexia, you just bring everything to life. Because, you know, it, sometimes you get people saying, oh, dyslexics cannot read, or because they cannot see the struggles, they feel giving them additional yeah. time in exams and things like that, you know, it's, it's preferential treatment. And it isn't. Because if you have a difficulty that makes it more, you know, tedious to take exams, for instance, yeah. you need level playing ground. You know, so what would you what would you say to say teachers and school owners, you know, and those that work with children and adults, you know, about giving those accommodations and those allowances? What would you say? Um, I would say first of all, you know, the sooner you're able to identify, you know, a child's need, the better for the child because it really reduces, you know, self-confidence when you feel you're not good enough, you're not like every other person and you're wondering why can't I be like this person, why, 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 why am I having difficulty? And of course as a child you don't even understand what you're going through. So if you're able to understand that each child is different and each child's needs their needs are unique then you're able to help that child and we shouldn't compare you say oh you know even parents and teachers don't compare say why can't you read like this child why can't you do like this other person you know that type of thing doesn't also help you know build you know self-confidence it just makes the person feel okay i'm not good enough and that you know keeps you know, it would enter into adulthood and you are feeling I'm not good enough, I'm not, I'm not good enough. There's so much you could say to somebody that if you don't, you know, give that person the encouragement they need, when by the time you become adult, it becomes a struggle, you know. And so for teachers, you know, the education system, this should, you know, take more time to look at people who have dyslexia and any other learning disability looking for ways to help these people. It's not preferential treatment or anything, or it's looking at it, oh, you, you know, they're cheating or things like that. You're just trying to give them a level playing field to be able to compete with their mates. Absolutely, absolutely. Have you experienced other mental health issues around that? Well, you know, the thing with mental health, maybe because we don't talk about it a lot in this country, you know, you actually may not know you are actually struggling with yeah, exactly. So, but for me, you know, it's just that whole thing like at work, being, you know, people having to prove with your work, look over your shoulders, you know, making sure that you're not, you know, posting something like has grammatical error. And at work, you can imagine that you're 
digital marketing executive, so I create content to post online. And sometimes you have someone else having to look over your work. Exactly, and that's what I Maybe you. people miss certain things and I post it and somebody's calling my boss and like, oh my god, there's a grammatical error and they're like, oh, Choma, put that down and, you know, so yes, it's, it's painful. Especially going through that, sometimes it feels very liberating. Especially when you have colleagues that are younger than you correcting your work, you know. So yeah, it's. I think it really takes a toll on you. Exactly. I, I can imagine that it does. I can imagine, that. and we, we we take that for granted. Yeah. You know, when difficulties are not addressed, when accommodations are not put in place, it does take its toll on the person. So I mean, looking at the workplace now as an adult. What are some of the things that you feel like employers, for instance, should consider, you know, maybe put in place? For, for instance, someone having to look over your work. What are some of the things that you think has helped you now and that can, you know, other people can do to help them and also to make the work easier? Okay, and for the workplace, I think the first step is entry. You know, most of the time, I feel as somebody who has dyslexia. Make sure, if, if you're going to do that type of attitude test, then make sure you're using a computer. And so that it is available. Yeah, so there is spell check. Exactly. You know, so at least if, I, if you tell me to write something, I, I, the computer at least could help me because that's, I mean, thank God for technology and I would say technology has helped my life. So having spell check, I have spell check on my phone, on my laptop, everywhere. I can't so write without it. So imagine going for a test and you give me spell check to help me. That I is, mean, I mean, that's fantastic. Awesome. And then when you get us, because people who have dyslexia, we have a beautiful mind. We might not do things the way people do things. But for me, when I enter a place and I see the problems, I start looking for solutions. And now I, I've come to realize that it's actually, you know, my dyslexic advantage. In fact, <laughs> you're, you're going to lead into my next question. But let me just let you finish, you know, what the workplace can, yeah. you know, provide. And then we'll go into that, your dyslexia strength. Okay. So the thing is this. You find ways to make things easy. All right. So when you come into the workplace, all I'm thinking about is how can I make life easy for myself? Because... I used to feel I was a natural lazy person, so I always look for shortcuts in doing things. And having people like that in your thing, who are sitting down thinking, okay, how can we get this thing done better? What are the other, you know, ways to get, you know, the same result without going through all this process? So, what are the things that we can do to get this thing moving forward? What kind of creative ideas can we come to get this product launched and things like that? So you need dyslexia in your company because we think different we come up with different ideas on how to get things done so if you're going to you know remove us from the entry level with aptitude test and you're models, losing out then yes you exactly. are going to lose out so now when you get us in you have to provide us with the tools to make the work absolutely easy you know if, whether it's spell check whether it's getting grammarly whatever it is just then give it to us. Give us the tools. Exactly. exactly. Whether it's text to speech software, yeah. whether it's speech to text software, but give you the tools you need to succeed. Because exactly. you can contribute a whole lot. So, what is your dyslexia strength? <laughs> Every dyslexic has superpowers. And now, yeah. you know, as long as school has not bogged the superpower down and made things difficult, what have you discovered is your strength, your unique part of you? That is really a success strength. Okay. To start with, I am someone who is hungry for knowledge. That it sounds strange. It does not for sound strange. For somebody who doesn't like, <laughs> that doesn't like well. Dyslexia, well. dyslexia does not affect your intelligence. <laughs> they have average to high intelligence. You have a lot yeah. to offer. So, okay, I'm a voracious reader. I'm a big girl fan of my heart. And it's strange. But thank God for audio books. Awesome. It makes life very easy for us. Absolutely. Um, in 2020, I challenged myself to do 120 books. No. Yeah, I did. Oh, no, no. Did I say 120? 150. Oh, yeah. And I did it. 
And if you want, you can go and check. I mean, my records are on. Tell them, tell them the value of audio books yeah. for people that struggle. Yeah, audio books. I discovered audio books in 2010. I used to go to this library in Manchester, and not. Um, I've forgotten the name of the library, but it was in I think not East Manchester or something like that. I've forgotten the name of the library. And I used to go every week to borrow books. So this particular day, I just realized that there was a session that had some. You know, like CDs and things like that. I was wondering. So I asked the lady, I was like, what's this? And she was like, they're audio books. I said, what do you mean? She was like, you just listen to them and I was like, okay. Let me I brought a couple and that was the end. Since 2010, I've not read a physical book. And really, you have read a lot if yeah. you have picked a physical book. And to me, reading a physical book is a chore. I can't, I can't stand it. So if there is a book, I look for the audio version. If there is no audio version, then that's when I now start the whole struggle to try and read the book. You know, so audio books are fantastic. I mean, I discovered audio, audio, uh, audio book, uh, script, uh, audio book. Then I have another place where I get my audio books for free. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I like so, that. So yeah, so I mean, there are a lot out there. Even LibriVox have audio books. So, I mean, you, the possibilities are endless. Awesome. So, there's so many opportunities to get your reading done. Then, another thing I'm good at is when it comes to uh, creating things. I love creating, especially like food, drinks, you know, the healthy variety. So, I sit down, I think about food, I come up with recipes, I come up with things and I just start doing it. You know, like salad. All right, let me give you an example. I have what I call my doodle salad. You know, yeah. And when people, when I create, because I don't do salad the way everybody does, it, it's boring. So <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> so what I tell people is, you know, because they were like, "Chama, why are you putting plantain? Why are you putting beans? You know, and when I mean beans, I'm talking about like brown beans, you know, mm-hmm. or you drop mm-hmm. beans, and you're using it to make really? salad. Yeah. And they were like, "Why?" I said, "Why not? Why not? Exactly. Why not?" Who said that we, it has to be maybe keep that your dyslexic mind? Yeah. So and I, I didn't know that. So <laughs> that's how I started creating things, creating food, drinks and also then I also uh, love um, what else do I like? Okay. You think outside the box. Yeah. Um when it comes to ideas, if you have ideas, if you tell me your problem, I'm giving you a solution to your problem immediately. As in, I, I initially used to think it was a gift, but it's still a gift from God, it is you know, gift. but it's, it was quite amazing, you know, being able to do that and seeing things differently, you know, you're telling me something and I've already gone ahead into the future and start walking back to see what the problems that are, is your you know, so, yeah. yeah, so there are a lot, you know, I, I found about myself, my friends, everybody keeps saying I'm techy, and I just realized because I was trying to solve my problem, <laughs> that I ended up embracing, you know, technology. And of course, I'm a photographer by hobby. Oh. Yeah, I'm a videographer as well. And it's because of that whole creativity that... What would you say to the others out there, people out there? One last thing to say to them. Um, so, if you have dyslexia, or you're suspecting that you are one, don't be afraid. You're in good company. All right, there's so many people who have gone before you that have had this and they've done a lot with themselves. We're talking about people like Albert Einstein, Jamie Oliver, Richard Branson, Steve Jobs. I mean, there are so many people. So don't be scared to go and get an evaluation. Such an exciting time speaking with you. you. I mean, just hearing you say the words, your experiences, yes, despite your difficulty, you have a lot going for you. You have a lot of strengths. And I really would like to also say this as well, you know, that when you have a child that's struggling with something, they have strengths in other areas. So build up on those strengths, you know, don't let the strengths die. Build up on the strengths and use that as a leverage, you 
you know, inform them, encourage them. I mean, I can imagine if you had even more encouragement with your know, creative side. Yeah. I mean, what would that be now? Explosive. <laughs> and even now as an adult, I see all the things that you do, yeah. all the ideas you churn out. I mean, now you're thinking through. <laughs> it's, um, it's awesome. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today, Thank you. having a conversation. Definitely we're calling you back again, you know. No problem. Thank you so much, viewers. It's been a wonderful time with Kim, with um, Chairman today. I've been excited. I hope you've learned one or two things. And we look forward to seeing us again. We look forward to seeing you. So you take care and later then. Bye. Bye-bye.